Hi, Carol here and welcome back to my craft room. We are on part three. I have taken my paper and I have crinkled it, remember on the first part there, and I tried to run it through the embossing folders. I needed two sides and the center. And when I crinkled it up, I got rip tear in there and a few in here, which I was able to wet and pull together. But this isn't going to bother me because we are going to have underneath here, I'm going to have cheesecloth so that it holds this together. Uh, in the tutorial that I watched, and it's Sheena, it's Sheena Webis Webisor or Webs something. Um, if you just look up Sheena's faux leather technique, you will get it. And I took a picture of it on my iPad just to show you how beautiful her faux leather books turned out. Can you see this if I come up like that? Is that not beautiful? And this is where my inspiration was drawn from. Now, I've she's done a few things that are a little different, and that's okay, you know, because I always change it up myself. And what I did was on the center, I had to go in and redo it because of having to crinkle it and try to move these pages in. But do what you can to get the kind of uh, look you want. What I was looking for, my main focal point was the middle. I wanted this Stampin' Up! part, if I could show you close up here. I think uh, it would be easier if I brought the camera down to it. Isn't that gorgeous? That is going to be my focal point so and it's supposed to look like leather so this tear is only going to add to the beautiful antique effect so what i'm going to do now is take some of my larger distress inks and i am going to let me see i hope i took out vintage or walnut stain i'm going to start with that i'm looking at my photo to grab my inspiration for colors. So I have the green, I have some of the walnut in here, and then I have, it looks like aged mahogany. So uh, I didn't grab my large one in that, but um, let me just take the lids off. And I'm going to brush this just lightly like this not not to um, I'm going to wet this down again so I just want a bit of this color and if you go over and look on Sheena's you will see that brushed corduroy I have done things in different stages, but it's only because I only watched it once and I kind of had to, that's all I'm going to do there because I'm going to add some of our mixture, our solution again, and I'm going to shake it up again just to let this move a bit. Now I do have enough of this in here. I don't know why it's giving me trouble. Let's see. There it is. I'm going to spray this down one more time and let these colors soak in to the fiber. Tim Holtz Distress Paints move with, I'm going to grab some scattered straw and put some of this down with my little one. This is just for the background. This, and then we'll grab, I just want the water to work on this to give it, so it's not so detailed. So I'm gonna squirt it again into the fibers, let the ink do its thing, we will take our heat tool, try 
dry it up. Doesn't take long. I'm just going to heat the back quickly. And then you'll see how this is going to be transformed. And it seriously doesn't take long to dry. We'll be drying as we are talking. So I thought the cheesecloth on the back would hold it. It would give it the strength it needs. It would glue it on. I was thinking of doing it with paper. Then I thought, no. And then I thought tissue paper. And that's, that's you know, I might do that. It's between the cheesecloth and the tissue paper to hold it together when we put it down. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use twine, or if you have jute, we're going to use that so that it looks like it has a real book spine. Uh, Sheena did not use that on her tutorial, but I really like that look. So I'm going to use it on mine. There we are. Okay, let's start working it. I think that's drying up really nice. I took out some makeup sponges. <coughs> okay. I took out some makeup sponges, so I'm going to take some uh, sponged, spiced marmalade and I hope I'm not too close. Let me see. I think I am. There we go. And see how this works compared to... I think it'll work well. I'm going to start in the corners. Just beautiful. You want to get down. The sponge allows me to get down in the... Um, little nooks and crannies like so and I don't want this to be my focal point actually I want more of the aged mahogany because that is the paper line in the front but I do like this on leather I think it looks nice and see what I mean? You've got that where we sprayed it. How the lines took the walnut stain took over. You've got all those little wrinkles from squeezing the... There, I'm going to leave that like that. These makeup sponges are awesome. Take another one, and here's where I'm going to go with my aged mahogany. I don't know if I, I don't think I grabbed that one in my large ones. So we'll use a, a small one. I don't think it's going to matter. Just put it across my sponge. Now I have my paper right here to give me some idea. beautiful. I knew this would come out beautiful. Then when we get that uh, that spray and my beeswax stuff on there, I think really um, you could use uh, floor polish. It has the shine to it and put it in a spray bottle. I think it look awesome. I like the spice marmalade in the background. It's really picking up the just beautiful where you want it to be pronounced just press down on it. This gorgeous.
You get these makeup sponges. I got mine at Walmart. I'm not sure how many are in the package. And uh, I'll have to look at I want to add some green on here. Tap it in. I don't want to lose all of the spice marmalade. There we are. Let's see what you think. Isn't that gorgeous? And when we get that shine on there, so we do need to have the green. And I am going to go over this paper with, I'm not going to leave that white so white. So I'm just going to show you how. Let me get some of this spice marmalade. How it's going to go together. Because you see too much of that white. I don't like that. So let me just show you right there. What do you think of that on top? Look at the um, that part right there. Can I get that in there focused for you? So see how if I take the light out of there, it's not so bad. No. There we go. So the spine is going to look really nice once we get this paper all matchy-matchy. So I'm going to need some greens. So let's put the lid on this and then let me grab my green box so my green tones in it and you'll see a, a difference there oh there so we have some greens to choose from let's see looking at just put your picture up to it and I think I think we're going to go with the mm, forest moss maybe. I'm going to use the other side of my sponge here. Let's try it. I think it is forest moss. So let's put some of this. Oh, forest moss in there. Beautiful. Like I said, you're the you're the one that's going to determine what inks. And you don't have to use distress inks either. You can use your Stampin' Up inks, any inks that you have. It doesn't have to be distress. I just happen to like the distressed ink colors and the way that they perform with water. There we go. Now let's move on. That looks gorgeous. I don't want it too dark. I don't want to like totally, you know. I think I'm going to have to use a tad bit of the walnut stain. Just a bit of it here. I'm going to use this little corner of my sponge. I want some browns in there. Just like that. That's all I'm doing. We're finished. Threw that out because I mixed up the colors. And I think we are going, this is going to look beautiful when I get this done. I love the effect it has. And then you can take a separate sponge. Where's my sponges? I put them away already. Um, you can use, if you find it's too dark, take another sponge. Here's what they look like. 12 premium rounds. You can take this and look at, bring some of the color out like that. There we go. Okay, now here comes the part. I'm going to do 
half with my beeswax. I'm going to grab another sponge. And then we're going to put the binding on in the front and back. And it will look awesome. Let's see. I'm going to put a bit of this just to see on the corner. That's beautiful. Can you see the difference if I put that up there? Let me turn this around. That's the wax. The bees wax compared to nothing. Isn't that nice? Let's spray this and see how this turns out. You know, I am thinking I'm going to spray this. I'm only doing it a little bit at a time. I don't want it all over my... I think I want to have this just as an undercoat. And that is the protectant for leather. But I'm still going to wax it for the shine. And this is how it looks. That wax. It's called Burt's Bees Almond and Milk Hand Cream. And this is going to give us the shine. It's going to make the texture. You're able to move with this. Good idea, Carol. Thank you. <laughs> Talking to myself here. This is going to make it shine. It'll dry. It'll make it uh, really nice to work with going around the book. And that's all you want, right? Just to make it soft, and this is making it soft. I bet you my mother's hand cream would have done it too without having to buy this. But these weren't expensive. It gives me the shine I want and the protectant from the spray. I'm not afraid to experiment. You know, what's it going to do? only going to add to your project and look how soft that is just beautiful love it and it does look like leather I'll add a little bit down there oh. come on love these colors. This is going to look really good. I think I've hit everywhere with it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There. Folds beautifully. Looks just gorgeous. Now, let's take this away. I think I'm going to give it another little spray of my Protect All. One time. That's it. Put that away for my next book. And take the sponge. Awesome. Let's give it some, I'll show you one more time. Burt's Bees Almond Milk Hand Cream. And I think any hand cream would make this like really, um, look at this, look. And, you know, bring that paper up into a beautiful moist, uh, which sponge did I use for that? This one. I'm going to go back and add over top of that I want more shine so I'm going to use more wax out it comes this one is I've used too much of it on there let me try this there yep 
I want that shine. Then I'll dry it with the with our drying tool. This will go right in, it'll just work its way right into the fiber of the paper and you will be really happy. I am. There we go. And like I said, I think um, floor polish, wax, you know, wax, I have it for my uh, floors. I use the real wax. I think that would have looked gorgeous. Uh, I still like the old-fashioned wax on the... I did my apothecary in the paste wax. And it came out beautiful. There we go, my friends. So, put that away. Now we'll do the back. What have I decided on? I think the greens on this look beautiful. I will add some more. I will add some orange to this to get this orange tinge because I'm going to cut out these flowers and bring them up uh, so that it has a 3D effect. And then when I put this butterfly, where's my beautiful butterfly? I will take and work in some colors. This is green and I will match it up to, um, where's my orange here, my spice marmalade right here. I will match this up to match the paper, see that? go. This will match that when I get done and so will this. I'm going to add, I'm going to bring some of the spice marmalade into my cover because if it's vintage you don't want to see any white. So mix your colors all up. Don't want to waste any more time. Let's just show you that so far. Isn't that rich? There you have it. I can see it beautifully, but that light to me seems to... I'm going to walk it away just right there. Walk my camera. Let's see if I can move this down a tad. There. And walk it into more natural light. Isn't that gorgeous? I think it is. I think it turned out wonderful. I'm really happy with it. So, see I'm looking at that light kind of shining right down and it seems bright, but this is not bright. Okay, it smells awesome in here too. Mm. Okay, let's turn it around and make a decision. I think I will go with uh, tissue paper. To hold this together. That would be awesome. So would the um so let's take some tissue. Cut it down to somewhat size. Smells good. There. Okay, and then let's take a good glue. I think this tacky glue will be nice. And that's what's going to hold this together. Work on this. I'm not in the camera. I'm holding this way up high. To it needs to be really squeezed out. Yikes. There we are. See how that works. Move 
with our wax paper. I'm going to put the waxy side down on the tissue and I'm going to go over those pieces that are Kind of spread it. Oh, there we are. Got to be a little gentle there. Just pushing it kind of all over. Grab my tissue. And the tissue does not have to be crinkled. It's just holding our, I just want it to dry onto the back to steady the cracks. And then if I'm not happy with that, which I think I'm going to be, I'll put some cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is always good. Lift up the corners and just grab a little bit of your glue. There we go. Most of them stuck. I don't think it's vital, but hey, might as well have it right, right? There we go. Okay. There we are. So. I am going to wash this down with a baby wipe and my hands. There we are. Easy peasy. I'd like to give thanks to Sheena there for her wonderful tutorial and everybody that's watching thank you very much I think you really like this okay that's awesome so I'm going to take my large scissors thanks to Virginia and I'm going to go this side cut this down this without cutting my there we go and once this dries you'll be able to run it through your cutter as well but it has to be fully dry as we all know I can't put this on my um, book until it's dry either. I'm just going to take a bit of the bottom off here. There we go. Not much. Just a tad. There we have it. And it's drying nicely, but it's still leaving that shine, which I like. And that glue should hold that few little places does 